All right, before we get to demonstrating this, just a recap on the muting. So basically, with the picking hand, you want to make sure that it is covering the unused strings. Minus maybe one. So since you're starting off on the high E string, the strings that need to be muted are the E, the low E, A, D, G strings. Those four minimum. You might get some muting done on the B string. It's kind of a close call because of, you know, you want to make sure that your E string is not being muted by your uh, picking hand. However, the index finger is going to be muting the B string. So basically, just remember you got to have that index finger up underneath the B string when you're fretting the E string. <coughs> and then when you move to the, <coughs> the B string, you're going to have your index finger barely touching the high E. And it's also going to be underneath the G string. So... Hopefully that's enough to uh, remind you of what to do there. But yeah, just anytime you hear any unwanted noise, make sure that your right hand is covering the strings you don't, you're not playing on. And then look at your left hand and make sure your index finger is muting properly as well. And of course, if you hear any chord sound like that, then you know you just need to bend that index finger a little bit more. So one thing that could help is just kind of like move your arm out a little bit. <clears throat> Goodness. <clears throat> just finished the lesson and now I got a bunch of crap in my throat. Uh, anyway, I know it's like if I have my hand like really far back, like I'm cocking my wrist a lot, you know, bending it this way, um, then it's definitely going to be in a bar, a bar chord there. But if I push it forward a little bit more, then my index finger is going to be out of the way a lot more. So it's maybe just bending your finger more isn't always the uh, the necessary thing. Because here it's bent the same way, but arm position will change how much your index finger is on the E string when you're holding the B string. So maybe you just need to move your arm forward a little bit, and that will change the pressure you have with your index finger on the E string. Um, <clears throat> so... Rhythm for this, we have one and two and three, one and two and three. So that last note holds out for two beats there. So here's what we have starting at 60. You may notice at the slower speeds, even though you're muting like the high E string there, you might hear some little clunks. You hear that, the little clunks there? It's very hard to avoid that at the slow speeds because you hear everything a lot more clearly. But at that speed, you don't really hear it. So, if you hear the muting sound a little bit, not a huge deal. Not a huge deal. <clears throat> All right, 120. and the goal speed of 240. <clears throat> All right, number two. Basically the same thing, but we have moved down in key. So now we use the ring finger set of the middle. Same rhythm. Here it is at 60. <clears throat>
160. Two hundred. And the goal speed of two forty. All right, <clears throat> on to the last one. So the same rhythm one and two and three, one and two and three. Sixty to start. One twenty. One sixty two hundred and the goal speed of two forty. The other thing we talked about was finger placement or what fingers to use there. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and keep using that middle finger for the stretches down here and the non-stretches up here to yes, keep with the consistency always. Um, but if you have any questions before next week, let me know. And uh, yeah, so and just one last reminder, the previous exercise that was given last week we're done with that just focus on the three new things and keep the scales fresh and i will see you next week <laughs>